Bladder extrophy is a congenital abnormality that results in an inside-out bladder, where the bladder protrudes out of the abdomen, leaving the inside of the bladder exposed to the outside environment. Normally, in the first trimester, endoderm in the hindgut expands to form the cloaca, which is a temporary structure that connects the urinary, digestive, and reproductive tracts. Separately, the ectoderm forms the anterior abdominal wall. At around eight weeks of development, three important things happen. First, the anterior abdominal wall matures and forms the muscles and connective tissue of the lower abdomen. Second, the cloaca splits to form the urogenital sinus and rectum. The urogenital sinus later goes on to become the urinary and genital ducts, as well as the urinary bladder. And third, the cloacal membrane opens up to the outside of the body, creating openings for the urogenital tract and anus. Alright, so bladder extrophy happens when the developing bladder and urethra herniate anteriorly, and this causes a couple problems. First, it prevents the normal development of the lower abdominal wall, which leaves it open. Second, it prevents the fusion of the pelvis, which leaves a wide split in the symphysis pubis. Also, most cases of bladder extrophy involve epispadias, which is where the urethra exits the top of the penis. But the opposite isn't true. Not all cases of epispadias involve bladder extrophy. One way to kind of think about the final result is to imagine the bladder and the urethra. Then make a cut through the top of the urethra and bladder. And also imagine that that cut goes up through the symphysis pubis as well as the abdominal wall. After that, imagine pushing on the bladder from the bottom until it's inside out. And this is essentially what the final defect in the bladder extrophy looks like. And that bladder pushes through the abdominal wall into the outside world. In addition to this, bladder extrophy causes other changes as well. For example, the anus is usually more anteriorly located. Also, in boys, the anterior part of the penis is shortened, and in girls, the vagina is wider and shorter, as well as more vertically oriented. The exact reason that bladder extrophy happens in some infants is unknown, but one theory is that the mesenchymal cells fail to migrate between the endoderm of the cloaca and the ectoderm of the anterior abdominal wall. Without mesenchymal support, the cloacal membrane becomes unstable and opens up to the outside prematurely. And this creates a hole in the lower abdominal wall, which exposes the internal structures, like the bladder, to the outside. Having a bladder and urethra exposed to the outside environment can lead to complications, like incontinence as well as an increased risk of urinary tract infections. As far as diagnosis goes, the defect's clinically obvious when a baby's born, but it can also be diagnosed earlier on a prenatal ultrasound. Generally, within the first few weeks of life, the bladder and urethral defect are surgically closed, but sometimes staged surgeries are needed over months or even years. Alright, as a quick recap. Bladder extrophy is a congenital problem where the bladder protrudes through the front of the abdominal wall, and it's often accompanied by epispadias. Bladder extrophy can cause incontinence and increase the risk of urinary tract infections, and requires early surgical correction.